Hello, you've caught me reading my big book of praise, where I get the team to print out every positive comment written under one of my videos. Let's see what we've got. It's great you're doing Friday features again. I really love it when Dave's in them. Another classic list feature. I didn't realise how much I missed Delsin. I laughed until my sides hurt. Mike, Jane and Andy are so funny. What video is this from? For most people, it's nice to look back on accomplishments. That's the appeal of trophies, isn't it? A vast wall of accolades capturing every single moment you turned a boss into paste or pulled off a superhuman feat of digital dexterity. But while trophies document the highs, they also remind us of a few lows. I'm talking about the trophies that invite us to take a walk on the dark side. Challenges only a depraved mind would conjure up, where you leave your morality at the title screen and go to wicked lengths in the name of swiping a platinum. These unlocks are not accomplishments to boast about, but moments of weakness forever burned into my gaming record. I am begging you not to judge me in the comments below as I reveal seven terrible things we have done for trophies. Entry number one, Dastardly from Red Dead Redemption, in which a terrible thing is done to a lady using a locomotive, both messing up her day and nobbling the 310 to armadillo. People bang on about Red Dead's shades of grey, but I think everything John Marston does can be filed neatly into one of three categories, the good, the bad and the ugly. Let me demonstrate. Washing away your troubles with a bourbon? That's good. Following up that first bourbon with a second, third and fourth bourbon, bad. Drinking so much moonshine you forget how stairs work, ugly. The only time my good, bad, ugly system doesn't work is during trophy hunting, where in my opinion the game goes beyond ugly and into the despicable. The warm-up act is a trophy for punching out a patron in every bar on the map, leaving a trail of bruised eyes and a real ding in several TripAdvisor scores. Next we indulge in some light eradication, killing the last buffalo on the Great Plains. As I've already got that one, I can't show you a buffalo in this video, so here's a reenactment using a goat. But the most wicked act is the dastardly trophy for placing a hogtied lady on the train tracks and waiting for the inevitable splat. Getting a trophy? Good. Hurting an innocent NPC? Bad. Explaining why I have this trophy to my loved ones? Yeah, that gets ugly. Number two is Yakuza Zero and the mysteriously named I Did It For The Trophy. What did I do for a trophy that was so bad we can't speak its name? After all, surviving the streets of Camarocho involves plenty of things I wouldn't gloat about. I've stuck traffic cones where traffic cones should never go. I've blown an entire house down payment trying to win whatever this thing is. I once fed a man a firecracker. And to add salt to the wound, I literally added salt to the wound. After seeing that, I never leave the house without packing heat, which is why I always carry this lovely bottle of Tabasco sauce. But no, this isn't about violence. I did it for the trophy is one of the few Yakuza Zero accolades that doesn't require a hoodlum to go home wearing a bike as a hat. Knuckles are kind of involved, but not in the way you think. No, for this one, you need to swallow your pride. Make sure your loved ones are out for the evening and visit Gandahara. As you can probably tell from the posters, this is not a shogi club. Here you hand over 800 yen and watch a dirty video for a trophy. A quick pause there. That is as much as I can reasonably show you, but I have recreated the rest of the video so you don't feel shortchanged. While the family are out of the room for Yakuza Zero, let's take the opportunity to commit further salacious acts in Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. Or should that be Metal Gear Sordid? In the opening tanker alone you can bother guards in the trouser department, or take secret snaps of a marine in his pants and email them to Otacon. 
Maybe it was for the best they replaced this guy with Raiden. In a trophy list full of red flags, they come none redder than the two found in this early locker room. And speaking of red, that's the colour of my face as I try to awkwardly talk around them. I guess the first is pretty harmless. You earn kissing booth for climbing into a locker, leaning into the poster inside and giving it a smooch. I won't pretend to understand it. It's not something I'd ever do. I'd be scared of getting paper cuts on my lips. The second is Snake Beater, which should be self-explanatory. It's certainly self-exploratory. You climb into the same locker, look at the poster, and ring Otacon for a moment two work colleagues should never share. Should have let that one go to voicemail. Our next act of trophy hunting evil is called Tears of Shame and appears in Far Cry Primal. That's the caveman one set 12,000 years before present day, back when guns were sticks, there were no radio towers to climb, and common decency had yet to be invented. This isn't about me being all modern and judgy, you know, people back then had to do nasty things to survive. And we're going to sit here and try and cancel my great 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 grandfather but i definitely frown at him to earn tears of shame you first need to befriend an animal you toss down a prime cut and lure it to your side with the promise of companionship kindness and all the rival cavemen it can eat you are now friends for life maybe you give your loyal pal a nickname bitey mcbite face don't worry it's 10,000 bc no one's made that boring joke before you've just invented the first meme but spoiler alert don't get too attached to bitey no to earn tears of shame you have to draw the bowstring as your friend stares back at you with nothing but love in their eyes and then send them to the prehistoric pet shop in the sky and then skin their still warm remains for crafting materials and so it is that man's best friend becomes man's best hat. I'm honestly not sure I can live with myself, but hopefully it impressed my great 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 Next up, Baldur's Gate 3, the game so rich it can appear in pretty much any Friday feature. Evil isn't in short supply in Larian's RPG. Forget seven terrible things we've done for trophies, you could rename this game a thousand terrible things we did to save the world. It's the only RPG that comes with an entire character class designed to self-sabotage your story with random acts of woodland violence. Surely you should be reserving your foot for more deserving foes. That poor creature was harmless. I didn't press a thing. I didn't! It was the Dark Urge! But even the Dark Urge would wince at murder in Baldur's Gate, a trophy awarded for, and I quote, coating the streets of Baldur's Gate in blood and becoming an unholy assassin of Baal. It's not subtle, is it? Earning this means muscling in on a murder investigation run by a flying elephant detective. Think Sherlock Holmes crossed with Dumbo, aka not so Dumbo. She wants you to track a serial killer with a thing for hands, the same hands you need to impress the killer's bosses in a secret murder tribunal. If you kill the killer and take his handbag, that is his bag of hands, you then have to pass a near impossible ability check to convince them you're the real deal. It's much safer to beat the killer to his victims and take their hands for yourself. You were supposed to lend a hand, not take one. With blood on your hands, that's your hands, not the hands you've collected, you can gain access to the final test of this murder-loving bunch. You just need to prove your loyalty by killing that lovely flying elephant from the start of the quest and taking a quick dip with a Baal bath bomb. Dark Urge made me do it. He did. 
In our next game, The Return of the Obra Dinn, you basically play a 19th century insurance investigator. Though, instead of working out whether a Ford Fiesta dinged a Honda Civic, you're trying to work out whether that Kraken tentacle dinged the bosun. Sixty lives were lost on the Oberdin's last voyage, and you have to deduce who was responsible for each of them. Or if you're a shameless trophy hunter, you can pin every single one on the same man. That man is Captain Robert Witterell, who, to be fair, did kill a couple of sailors in self-defence, but he certainly wasn't responsible for any of this, or whatever's happening to that poor bloke. And yet, here I am, jotting down his name in my magic notebook, making up fake causes of death for every corpse. Yep, this looks like strangulation to me, why not? With your little book of lies complete, you hop back in your rowboat, return to the mainland, and learn that the now disgraced captain's estate has been forfeited to the crown. But hey, you got your trophy and you barely had to work for it. Imagine if I phoned in these Friday features like that. You know, pick the same game every time. No one even remembers who you are. Parappa hates it when you sing along. You don't even like Star Wars, do you? Now, before you report me to HR, just be aware that I am practicing being horrible to people for the final trophy on this list. It's called I'm the Firestarter and is earned by making enemies of all your friends in Oxenfree. That may not sound as troubling as skinning your pet wolf, but given how lovingly drawn this gang of teenage friends is, it's actually gut-wrenching to plot against them. I spent most of my playthroughs desperate for them to love me. Please, virtual teenagers, Tell me I'm still relevant. For this run, you need to switch into full pass ag mode. You blame people for everything. You deliberately mess up every test and challenge. You refuse to give people hugs, unless it's a chance to deliberately invade someone's personal space and get to give someone a hearty slap across the chops. Ow! Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you had it in you. Okay, that's not pass ag. That's like good old-fashioned agag. Curiously, at one point you do have to save the life of one of the group, Clarissa. Not because it's the right thing to do, but because she technically needs to be alive in order to hate you. That is incredible dedication to one of the most spiteful trophies ever devised. And once you've got the trophy, you can just reload and go back to being friends. Right, guys? Those were seven terrible things we've done for trophies. I honestly feel awful about it, so tell me that you forgive me by clicking the thumbs up button under the video. It would put my mind at ease. And tell me what terrible trophy you're ashamed of or what you think of the video. And who knows, you might even end up in the book. Oh, looks like we've got a new one in for this video. That was an all-timer. We got two Dave Tally. Oh, for God's sake. See you next week. Great, 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 great,